if you are live streaming with the same per presenter computer that runs your lyrics and graphics, then you need to make sure that the audio coming into per presenter 7 intended for the live stream coming from your maybe X32 console is not also going back out from per presenter into your X32 console when you go to play music or videos. This would create some obvious problems. So fortunately, there is an easy way to make sure that this does not happen. Hi, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. For today's sponsor, I wanna let you know that at crazyamazingdesigns.com, I offer one-on-one -on -one training to help you work through your production-related needs. Pro Presenter, X32, M32, live streaming, whatever training or projects you have going on, I'd love to schedule a Zoom call to help you and your church get things situated. Now, back to this fun topic. When I connect headphones to my laptop, I get two channels of audio, one left and one right. When I connect a multi-output audio interface like this X32 to my laptop, I get the 32 channels of audio in and 32 channels out. But when I play system audio from the computer, it always plays out output channels one and two by default, and that cannot be changed. Computers have a built-in audio engine that grabs all the sound from applications across the computer and sends all of it to those output channels one and two. Some programs do allow you to directly select the audio interface that's connected to your computer, and then you have way more control to send specific things to specific channels. But the system audio all goes out to one and two, no matter what interface you have selected. I've got Pro Presenter loaded up here, and I'm gonna go to Pro Presenter Settings, down to Audio, the Audio tab, and now I'm gonna change my channel count from two channels to four channels. There are three sections on this page that deal with where the audio from Pro Presenter 7 is being sent. The middle section called Main, this is the main output that comes from a video, music, or any sounds coming from Pro Presenter. So with it set to the default setting of system settings, this means that the audio will be sent to whatever interface the computer has selected for its output. So if I go up to Apple system settings and I go down to sound, you can see here on the output tab that Nathan's MacBook Air speakers are selected. So the main left and right from everything on the computer is gonna be sent to my MacBook speakers. So if I change the computer's output to X USB, which is the audio interface inside of the X32, actually, I wonder if it's M USB, if it's an M32. It's basically the same console, the hardware is a little bit different, the software is the exact same though. So back to Pro Presenter and the audio tab, the first section at the top is titled Inspector. This is where Pro Presenter's preview audio that gets played through the inspector is sent. So if I go to a video file or an audio file on my computer here, I'm gonna go to videos, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna go to inspector on any video or audio file. So this is the inspector. Maybe I wanna set a new in and out point for the video or audio file. When I click play here to listen to the file, I can see in the left side, the audio starts bouncing to show me that there's a waveform, that there is audio. And when I click play to listen to the file, the audio that's playing is now playing to this section. So let me go back to Pro Presenter settings audio. This top section here, this inspector, this is where that audio plays to. So currently it's set to listen on main, which means that whatever the main is set to, that is where the inspector will play its audio to. This means we can also separate where the inspector audio goes versus the main audio. I think that is so useful and so cool if you wanna send the main audio to an audio interface going to the sound system and then set the built-in speakers to play audio from the inspector. That is so cool. The bottom third of the screen, we see the SDI and NDI audio. And if you have a device capable of outputting over SDI, such as the DeckLink Duo 2 or a Blackmagic Recorder 3G, or if you're utilizing audio over NDI, then you can use this to specify audio to this output. Back to the middle section under main, I'm gonna go ahead and click routing. And the four channels on the left are labeled ProPresenter channel. These are the channels created inside of ProPresenter. The channels on the top are the destination and the channels on the left is the source basically. So we've got the source and the destination. The 16 channels on top titled device channel 
are the 16 system created channels. So I'm gonna send the audio from channels one and two in ProPresenter to channels one and two on the system, in the system. I can bypass the system settings by changing system settings to, let's say, MacBook Air speakers or straight to XUSB. This sends audio straight to the speakers or straight to the audio interface. So with XUSB selected, if I click routing, I can see that there's now 32 channels available for me to send the audio to. So now if I select MacBook Air speakers and I click routing, I can see that there are only two channels because the computer speakers only have two channels. Just below that, I can turn the volume up and down as well as delay the sound by 1500 milliseconds. And a reminder that 1000 milliseconds is one second. So with all of that explained, remember we changed the channel count from two to four. This allows us to have two more channels to route audio inside of ProPresenter. So I'm gonna go ahead and click routing under main, and then in the top left, I'm gonna hit clear, and this will remove the checked boxes. Now I'm gonna select one and two as my output channels. So make sure everything has been deselected from ProPresenter channel three and four, as we'll be sending the stream audio into three and four, and we don't want the audio to output back into our sound system. Now I can click out of this, click out of the settings window, and back in the main screen, I'm gonna go ahead and just put some graphics up on the screen. So in the left and right side of my screen preview of my multi-view here in my ProPresenter 7 template, you can see that we have audio meter. So you've always had the one on the left, which represents the audio coming out of ProPresenter and going to, well, wherever you have set up in main. But now on the right side, you can see that I have two more audio meters. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up the ones on the left to always be the main output from ProPresenter, but the ones on the right are gonna monitor the audio coming into ProPresenter on channels three and four. Now we can go back to ProPresenter settings. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the inputs tab. And this is where our audio comes in to ProPresenter. The audio tab is where audio outputs from ProPresenter. And here on the inputs tab is where audio comes in to ProPresenter. To stream with ProPresenter, you're gonna to need to set up both video and audio inputs. But if we link the audio to the video input, then the audio is only gonna be active when the camera is active on the output. This also means the audio source will switch when the cameras switch. And I think it's a pretty seamless transition, but it's still just not worth it. If you have multiple cameras or want to use the mode feature, then be sure to disable the audio source on each camera input, create a new audio input, and select where your audio is coming from. So I've got my video input, input one, I've got my audio disabled, and now I'm gonna go down to input, and I can go ahead and select my audio interface here, and then I can go ahead and select where my audio is coming from. You're either gonna need an audio interface to convert the XLR audio from your mixer to a digital format that the computer can understand, or you could be using an X USB interface, so basically the USB connection from the X32 or M32 consoles to the computer. There are really so many ways to get audio into ProPresenter. You could also have an ATEM switcher connected via USB-C, and you're either bringing in audio through the port on the switcher or through a camera, or use a recorder 3G with audio embedded over the HDMI or SDI input. Maybe you have a Dante virtual sound card connection, which brings in audio over the network. So there's so many ways to do it. However you get audio, select the source here. I can change the delay of the source to help it match the video. I can adjust the volume. Uh, we'll get into the routing in a moment. We can select and deselect channels. And as I talk, I can see that the audio is coming into channels three and four, but I also see that it's coming into channels one and two. There is no music or videos or anything playing from ProPresenter, so that means my microphone is being pushed to channels one and two and three and four, which is not good because one and two is outputting to the sound system. The last thing we want is my audio input going to the sound system because ultimately the sound system is pushing to the computer so you see this feedback loop that we've created here. When I click routing, I can see the source and across the top are the ProPresenter 7 channels that we set up in the audio tab and that's where we're gonna send audio to. So before I close out of the routing, I'm gonna select my mic input on the left. So you can see it's just one channel on the left, one channel coming in and then the question is where is it going? So we're gonna send it to channels three and four and we're going to disable 
channels one and two. Because this mic is a single mono channel, to properly explain this, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to NDI audio, and this is a simple two input channel uh, device. So because this is a stereo source, I think it makes a lot more sense. So now in the routing on the left, you can see two channels coming from NDI audio, and then we still have the four channels of ProPresenter audio. So I'm gonna set these up to be three and four, and I'm gonna disable them on one and two. Now on my monitors up here on the output window on the left side, we're not gonna get anything, but on the right side, we're gonna get the audio coming in going to three and four. I don't have any audio coming into three and four, so this is a bad example, but you get the idea. Well, we're not done yet, but to review, we are bringing in our live stream audio and sending it to channels three and four that we created in ProPresenter. The default audio output from ProPresenter 7 is two channels, one and two. So we kept that, but we are intentional to remove the audio also outputting to three and four. Now we can utilize the audio for the stream on channels three and four and output one and two to our system sound or device. Because we set up the audio as a separate input, it's not linked to the video input, and the audio is gonna always be active. Well, at least that's what it says when I click on my audio input, and then I look at the mode section across the top. We see off, on, auto off, auto on. This is where the mode feature becomes so useful. Basically, we can set the audio input to these four settings. Off means, well, off. On basically means always on, or auto off means that when a foreground video plays, the audio input is gonna turn off and the stream will get its audio from the video that is currently playing. So for simplicity's sake, I'll switch back to a MacBook Air microphone, and I'm gonna go to routing and make sure that channels one and two are disabled, three and four are active. So you can see on the right side, the audio is coming in and it's going to channels three and four, and then ProPresenter will still be able to output audio from one and two, so I'll go ahead and play a song, and there you can see that the audio is coming, going out one and two, and it's coming into three and four. So now let's send the audio to the stream or the recording output. So in the top right, I'm gonna go ahead and click live, go to capture settings, and then at the bottom, we're gonna click on routing. So ProPresenter has those four channels of audio, and it has two channels available to go to the live stream or the recording. So what we're gonna do here is, you'll never guess, we're gonna use three and four to go to left and right to the stream. If I were to select one and two, what would happen is that you would only hear the audio that is leaving ProPresenter. So if I select one and two and disable three and four, when there's audio coming out of ProPresenter, now the stream is gonna hear that and nothing else. So if I select three and four and not one and two, the audience is going to hear what's coming in and intended for the stream, and it's not gonna hear what is coming out of ProPresenter, because we want the audio coming out of ProPresenter to go to our mixer, and then we want that audio to come back in and go to our live stream. So that's pretty much all you're gonna need to do to make sure that your streaming settings are set up. Make sure you add your key and all the other information. I do suggest saving a preset. So go through here and set up your route, audio routing and your re, uh, streaming settings and then go up to the presets and say, stream preset and click okay. And now maybe change your destination to disk and then set up your audio for that as well, and then go up to here, save as disk recording. Okay, so now without having to worry about the audio, every time you go to stream, you can switch back and forth between stream preset and your test, which is gonna save the recording to a disk. And now you shouldn't have to worry about those stream audio settings getting changed, but it is so important to understand what's happening here, not just that it works. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, send me an email or leave a comment in the video. Our sponsor today is crazyamazingdesigns.com. If you'd like to sign up for a training session to connect with me over a Zoom call, then I'd love to uh, see how I can help you in your ministry, in your church, and whatever that it is that you got going on. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time, bye. Oh, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Crazy Amazing Designs on YouTube. Please subscribe. 8,000. Thank you so much for being a subscriber if you're a subscriber. 8,000 people have now subscribed to Crazy Amazing Designs. It's crazy. It's really fun.